Yo, what's going on, Mighty One? How you doing? <clears throat> Good afternoon, Garden Trader. What's up, Jack? What's up, Chuck? Yeah, I just I wanna I wanna do something different. I wanted to do a late day stream, and then um, <clears throat> also I wanna go over the levels because today just didn't really do much. So I think today's a great day to go over new levels and just kind of show everybody where we're getting everything and just kind of start over. Uh, I didn't do a weekly watch this last week or this week, so I thought it'd be cool for us to do a quick little stream session to end the day. We got an hour and a half before the market closes, so it's a great 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 enough amount of time. Uh, but I want to clear the spy chart, redo every level, every zone. I want to go to the bigger time frame. I want to go over all that again. And then I want to go to do the same thing on Triple Q, SPX, and IWM. So I want to do the top four that we normally do. Which, again, my main one's always going to be spy. But we're going to go over all four because I know some people prefer watching tech. Some people prefer watching SPX, even though these are basically the same thing. And then some people like looking at small caps, which I think is a great idea. Because if you would have watched small caps today you would have noticed, oh, there was a positive side to the market today. <laughs> it wasn't all just doom and gloom. So we'll go over all that here in a minute. Is the volume low? It shouldn't be. I have my volume at normal. Kind of focused on what y'all are saying too. Oops. Good afternoon. Aloha. What's up, Eric? How you doing? And yeah, I don't have any music on. I'm listening to music. What's up, Creator? No trade. Went back to sleep. What's up, Carter? How you doing? And yeah, this is just a fun poll. You don't have to actually do it or not. Volume is perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, redrift. You might just need to restart stream or, or turn yours up. What's up, Mel? Good afternoon, man. What's up, Michael? Good, just watching a slow-moving SPX. Yeah, I feel that. Um, but again, guys, we're going to be going over Spy and all that stuff. We're going to redo all the levels and stuff and just go over it together so we're all on the exact same page, or at least in similar pages, because, of course, we're all going to be looking for different opportunity. You know, a place of the chart, I might be more comfortable. You might not be, and vice versa. You might be more comfortable at a certain part of the chart. I might not be, you know, so it's just... That, that's all that's all going to be different of course but we all need to at least have the same information or similar information which you guys are pretty good about that but i wanted to make sure again what's up susan how you doing and yeah shout out to eric he posted all the news and stuff today so shout out to eric and he did it yesterday to get everybody ahead of the head of the curve and yeah small week there is no friday market sadly good afternoon mikey how you doing And yeah, this wasn't planned, so if some people don't join, it's okay. <laughs> it's not their fault. <clears throat> what a wild day, though. Wild, lower open. Um, they even made a new low, a little bit of a 90% entry that took them back over today's open, made a new high of day. They even went all the way up to the first target area, I guess you could say, uh, would be the gap. The gap fibs. If you go from previous day closer to today's open, this is the control. Po I'm sorry, this is the control point or the 50% fib. And this is the golden pocket, also known as the 65%. There, it's actually 61.8 to 65, but I like to go to the furthest extent of it because it's like why why ignore you know why mark both when I could just mark the furthest extent of it you know, so that's why I do that. But that is what we hit uh, basically on that first rally up. 
Came back down, kind of slowed down, which is very normal uh, again. And then they kind of held like the first area where they like pushed up after the open, which I thought was pretty interesting. And they haven't broken that once. They've held it here, held it here, held it here, held it here, working themselves back up. Kind of stuck under resistance. So I could see why a lot of you would avoid today. Definitely don't blame you. But yeah, good. Yeah, like you said, this is an accurate comment. Good bullish presence. Because it's not like we're saying, like, oh, this chart's bullish. It's going to go to the moon. No, we're just saying that there is some definite presence here of bulls. And we know that because they had the open, they broke it, and they held it. And then ever since then, you know, from the resurgence of that move, they've held their gains with good lows, good higher lows, basically building a base. So yes, we are still under the open, uh, I mean, under the, you know, initial momentum here. But we've definitely shown some presence here by buyers, which is, again, remember what we talked about. Those buyer days are always going to be the most boring because they have to also change sentiment. People who are going to be short, people who are taking profits, cutting their losses because they're like, oh, shit, the market's going to keep falling. And then they look back and they're like, oh, my gosh, it's holding. So it's like mixed emotions kind of day. And if you go to – I might be logged out of this. No, we're fine. Um, but normal consolidation after another week of gains after the major or for the major indices, and then weakness in mega caps after the EU Commission, blah blah blah. The Alphabet Apple news, y'all know about all that, and then rising rising Treasury yields. So mixed emotion day, but accurate comment right here. <clears throat> but how is everyone though? You guys ready to go over some levels? How's everyone doing? Hopefully you guys didn't get too hurt today or lose too much or hopefully you had some confidence in what you were doing at least. Because it does suck to lose and then be like, why did I even do that? But it, it feels good when if you take a loss or a win and you're like, well, that was planned. At least I stuck to what I planned. But how's everyone doing? And give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready to go on the levels. Just start spamming emojis and I'll start then. Uh, but we'll go through all of them here in a minute. Mikey said Tesla's holding the 50% Fib from the low in daily time frame. Potential swing call here. Hey there, glad to catch you live. What's up, Steph? This is also, and I'm not saying buy calls, but uh, what what candlestick pattern is this too? Let's see who knows this one. Kind of a funny question to ask too, because this isn't really that popular of a candle. It's not really taught that often. I feel like we're one of the few groups that teach it, to be honest. I really don't see people post about these candles. You know, everybody knows piercing lines and dark cloud covers. I mean, those are really easy to see, but what happens when it's like the opposite? You know, when you get like a piercing line, you're getting like a day go down, right? And then the next day opens lower and then closes up higher, right? But in this case, you have a green candle followed by a lower open that isn't below the previous day. It's just below its high and close. And then it overtakes it and makes a new high and close. What would we call this? See if anybody gets it. Remember, be confident with your answers. Let's see who gets this. And there's nothing wrong if there's nothing bad if you guys don't get this right, but I want you guys to start remembering these. They can lead to possible continuation. You want to see these on continuation more than anything, so this isn't really a great position for this candlestick right here, but no, you were right. It was a one white soldier. I was just wanting to see if somebody else would answer. But that is correct actually. A one a single white soldier. Um there's also the vice versa is the black crow. Which would have been if these were red, if this was a red candle going down, and the next day opened a little bit higher than the previous day's close, and then it closed lower. Yep, garden. See, Jack said it too. No, no, no. It doesn't have to be red. You want them to be green, if anything. And honestly, like I was saying, this isn't really a good position for it. You would want to see this like as a continuation pattern. You would want to see this after a breakout. Um, so you're really just seeing it as a good hold. I mean, it's a good presence of buyers here holding support. So basically, you could say like, oh, I'm bullish against the support. Whoops, I don't know why I have the circle on. You could say basically, I am bullish against this support. You have a lot of resistance here, but I mean, you have a clear, clear range here for Tesla. <laughs> it's pretty wide too, so some good day trades can be taken. If you see, 
you know, on, the, on like the five minute, 15 minute, 20 minute, whatever you're looking at. If you see price go up to this area and you see them make lower highs in the smaller time frames, it's really good risk reward for shorts. Vice versa for these lows down here with higher lows. Um, but guys, let's get started. You guys ready? Buy the dip if continuous. Yes. Good job, uh, Mikey. My colorblind ass almost said DCC. <laughs> Now you're good, and that's why I ask you guys this stuff all all the time. Because like a dark cloud cover, a piercing line, a single white soldier, a black crow candle, these all actually look all very similar. Like they're all very very close, but there's rules to them. And if you guys remember the rules, that'll help you with your trading, or at least identifying patterns. I'm not even gonna say that you're trading, uh, but again, and what are those things? What are those variables that help us remember each one of those? The open, the close, where they are on the chart, right? When we get a piercing line, we're opening lower, we're closing higher. When we get a piercing line, we're opening uh, a little bit lower, but we're above the previous day's open. We're closing higher than the previous day's close. There's progression there, right? You know, it's, it's a, there's a difference between them, but I can see why you guys get them because I, I was the same way. I'd mix them up a lot too, just because they are very similar. Uh, but you guys ready for some spy levels though? We'll go over spy and all that stuff. Got about an hour and 20 minutes in the market. in stream button on accident that'd be really good whoops i did not share the link to everybody awkward all right let's go over some levels then and I'll, I'll, I'll try to bring this up as much as I can. Here, I'll just leave it on the screen while I'm going. So let's do SPY first. So let's do... Oh, uh, whoops. Brain farting right now. Create drawing set. Uh, YouTube stream gang. Uh, what's today's date? I'm mistyping like crazy. 325. So YouTube stream gang, 325. So this is going to be for... Here, wait, I probably should rename that. DT we'll do for day trading so this will be our day trading chart and then we'll do another one string gang 325 uh, SW for swing even though it's we're not it's not just for swing trading it's for bigger time frame analysis but we all damn well know it's gonna be for swing trading so we're gonna do the day trade one for uh, let's do swing trading which one y'all what, what do y'all do first actually it's like, let me before I start what what do y'all do first? Do y'all do the day trading TA routine, or do you go through the swing trading TA routine first? Do you or do you just 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 do one? What what what, what is y'all's process? Are you tapping your leg, B? Oh no, I might be hitting my chair against the the desk that my mic is technically connected to. So I'm sorry if you're hearing that. You do the swing first. All right, we'll do the swing first then. All right, so first is first. I like to start on the monthly time frame. I like to just really get a good look at the chart. I like to see where's the high, where's the lows, where are higher lows, where are lower highs, where's the, what is price done, you know? And again, instantly looking for the emerging candles from the far left to at least get us started, you know, because that's really what that is. So let's at least get those levels there. That's not an emerging candle. These are, and we can't mark that one because we are still technically in the mar uh, month of March, so we can't really mess that one. I like to go to the weekly because I like to just kind of look around and be like, all right, is there anything here that's worth significant or worth marking, you know? And you could mark the old all-time high that's back here, uh, which would again be from the high to the open of that last green candle, and that could be seen as like a, a big kind of return to the mean kind of area because once you go to the daily, you're like, oh wow, we're pretty far from that. It's like, yeah, it might not matter now, but in the far future, if this trend was to ever break back up, and you get like a breakdown. Hold up. You get a breakdown, a lower high, a rejection of that breakdown, and you get a continuation down. This could be where price heads to over time. I'm not saying that's doing this anytime soon. I'm just saying like this could be seen as a return to the mean kind of thing, um, and that's that. That would be what you draw on the weekly. I really wouldn't touch anything else. If, you, if we were still in range here on the weekly, if we were like back here, I, I would probably stay on the weekly and I would focus on drawing like you know the demand that's down here. Walk, watch these higher lows watch this low right here you know all that good stuff but we're not we're not doing that stuff though we went up we kept going up so we're going to ignore that for now but technically you could add this if you really want to add your doomsday you know levels oh, we're in 2025 
but that's really all you need we're not really going to add anything else but it's nice to get a monthly view a weekly view let me close this and then a daily view of what you're looking at when you're going through your swing trading levels and then here you also want to look around for some potential um sorry i was looking at something uh you also want to look for some potential areas of interest and what, what are those all called we all know these emerging candles which we just went through those supply demand zones we're about to go through some more recent area ones but we already got the big one and psychological levels because again we've broken new all-time highs but also we need to get context of the chart what has the chart done up to this point and we're going to do that that's, and that's what you need to be doing with yourself every time you chart you need to give yourself context you don't want to you don't want to be that person that that was late to class and then tries to answer every question on the quiz and gets it wrong that's pretty much what you're doing when you're showing up late so you don't want to just go over, okay, what this week do? No, you want to go back and be like, all right, ever since we broke that old all-time high, you know, way back in January, what have we done since then? We've been in a very strong uptrend. You see higher highs, you see higher lows, and that's just good general info to tell yourself. So in the future, you understand, okay, we have been kind of in a fat uptrend. I would understand why continuation is very possible. This has been a run we've been doing since 480s. People have been trying to short this ever since. Now we're up over $40 a share. It's crazy. Um, but again, context. So what, what kind of fib can we draw when going to mark new highs? Well, one I like to draw, and this is going to be very repetitive, so get be, be very ready. But I like to go from the high, so this would be the old all-time high right here, to the slowdown, right? And then from there, we can see is this bullish or bearish? And you can see over the course of this day and this day, they decided to hold, gap up again, hold this as reset candle. And it's just kind of an ugly uptrend right here, very hard to follow day to day. But we can see they held a very nice fib, not just once, continued up, but when they returned back down with the bearish kicker, by the way, we know this is a bearish kicker because they opened, this isn't just a gap down. A gap down is, is this would be like a gap up. You see this, how it closed here and then opened here? See, this day opened here, closed here, and then opened here. So it completely annihilated the previous day's price action, whereas right here, just gapped up. So yeah, it eliminated some information, but not in the same manner, if that makes sense. So that's why that's a lot more aggressive. And even with that, we didn't get any follow-through through that control point or golden pocket, right? And that's just a basic fib. We haven't really drawn anything crazy yet. We're just looking at from where it broke out to where it slowed down, and if it continues to hold that area that we like to highlight, that's bullish. If not, then we're looking for some potential slowdown. If this would break, then we're looking for a test of 480. Under 480, we're looking for a test of that day's open, and so on and so on. Step-by-step -step process. So we're going to delete that. And then from where did they make a new high? Right here, right? So we're going to go from here. Oh, I'm sorry, back here. <clears throat> Let me zoom this over. I want, to, I want everything to be seen. So we've gotten from this point to the hold of that fib and we can leave that if you guys want i, I don't know if y'all even really care or not so we'll go from here to there just to see it holding um and then where do we see a new high get made right here right because this is where they kept that little continuation that single candle retest double candle whatever you want to call it continued up slowed down bearish kicker didn't really give us continuation we ended up getting a single soldier candle remember i told you guys they gave us that gap up and the higher close that's a single soldier candle it's very rare you see it like that though um, another continuation, another single candle retest. They continue higher, they slow down. But what can we take from here? If you go from the high to the slowdown, they did actually end up cracking under it. They end up giving it another higher close. So you had a little bit of a fake out here. Continuation, continuation, continuation. They end up holding the fib again, fib again, and another gap up, right? So now, and this is what you're going to do all the way up. We can delete this and get to the end of the chart now. But this is what you want to do to yourself, or do with yourself, sorry, not to yourself. <laughs> do with yourself um, every time you see a chart appear like this. Every time you see a breakout over a new high and you see it rally up and you see it slow down, mark that fib. Now, you might not think this is helpful for this time frame, but if you were to go ahead and scoot on down to the five minute and you're someone who likes to trade on these levels, let's give us a couple more days here. There we go. Um, you'll see that these levels actually end up being very effective for where you can look for our BTD setups, uh, higher lows, because you know we're in an uptrend, but it, you know it's going to be ugly because they're not going to make it easy to see. They're not going to make it obvious. They don't want to do that. They're going to they're going to try to change sentiment. They're going to try to make people want to short this again, and then they're going to keep carrying on with higher lows. So we need to be able to identify the areas that we need to be able to hold for us to continue higher, right? So even though it might have been ugly, you were able to see with just simple information, okay, what needs to hold for us to continue higher. That's pretty cool, right? So go back to the daily, um, and we'll, we'll finish our charting now. I just get, Again, getting context of the chart is very, very important, and I cannot stress that enough. I feel like a lot of people talk about that enough because they don't really know how to put it into words. But I know a lot of you guys do that already, um, where you're just kind of really updating yourself on the chart, and then you get into actually you know, charting it for future opportunity. So let's get into drawing some of these uh, zones now. So 
continuation up, slow down. So we're going to go from here to the top of that red candle, edit properties. And honestly, I'm lazy, so I'm just going to type it to 2025, but that's an area of demand. Rally up, slow down. So we're going to go from here to the point of slowdown. So the point of slowdown, top of the high, to the last open of the last green candle. Edit properties, go to 2025, so we don't have to mess with it for a while. Throw it over there. If you want to mark all these higher lows, you can. I'm just marking the major ones. This would be the major one because this is where they did a single candle retest. Very big bearish kicker that held that fib area. Also a good uh, emerging candle that we saw. Which is another thing I didn't add on to. That was literally the emerging candle. <laughs> it literally held it to the cent. Another hold, another higher close, continuation. We see all that stuff. We see the higher low. We see the higher low. So you don't really need to draw a zone here. But if you want to ever draw like a like a meat level here, like, oh, 494, there's definitely a level here. You could do that if it's just something like a visual thing for you. But if you're someone who doesn't need it, just leave it as is. Uh, and now we're moving on. Another emerging candle here. See a rally continuation. Hold a higher low. There's really nothing to draw here. I guess you could draw this. Whoops. Uh, and what I was doing is just going from low to the top of that last red candle where they rallied up again. They held it as support and continued on. So that's pretty much all we're dealing with right now. And then I don't like to draw a zone at the current all-time high whenever there's recent price action. Like, it's been literally just a couple days since we made this all-time high. So I really don't see the point in, uh, like, highlighting this as a zone. But I want it to be known that this is all-time high. So sometimes you can do a yellow line, a dotted line, whatever you want to do. And just kind of note to yourself, okay, that's what we have up here. Now, the last step that we're going to do is psychological levels. So we know we got 515 right here. And again, this you want to do this after all of your uh, emerging candles. We already have an emerging candle here. We have an emerging candle way down there. So we don't really need to add more, any more of that. So 515, we want to add 520. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking right here on my screen, by the way, because I'm looking at price. Mess that one up. Uh, 525, I'm going to mark that. Oh, I just messed myself up. We gotta zoom all the way back in now. Uh, Five thirty, close enough. Uh, Five thirty-five. I'm pretty OCD, so I like to make it exact. There we go. And that's really all we need. Um, only other thing that you could add onto this that you might have learned from me or Leland in the past, it, very recently of course, would be the dip reversal fib. So if you go from the last dip we had, which would be right here, and then you go from like the high that it was at, so pretty much here. You can actually go back. It's a backwards fib, but you're not doing it for that. You're doing it for this, for targets. So it gives you fib extensions. So if you really want to, you could combine this whole area. It's like little hidden zones. Highlight that area, highlight that area, and that's it. Now you can delete that fib if you want, and you have all these other areas marked off that technically have not been touched yet, but you know that they're there because of math from our fib. So that's all we have left uh, as of right now. But pretty interesting. We actually hit one already, if you saw that correctly. If you go back to that high again, we actually already hit one of these levels. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. But it, uh, 523.27. If you go from the dip to the high of the recent move before that dip, this is where the FIB extension goes to at 523.27. So just pretty much the bottom of that zone. And they perfectly smacked it before slowing down. Now, could we have just randomly started shorting against that? Maybe, maybe with good risk, maybe with decent intention that, hey, we know there's an area here, but that would be like guessing. Let's be honest. That would literally be like guessing. So maybe not ideal to go for those types of setups on the first time. But if you ever see this again, go up here and give lower highs than like the smaller time frames that you like to day trade on, definitely take advantage of that. That'll be good risk reward because that's not the first time it's been there right? Whereas the first time it's been there, that would literally be guessing. So I hope that helps y'all. Oh, that was a lot of talking, but that is how you do bigger time frame charting. It's a little weird right now with how you drew this part because we're at all time highs. Um, this isn't something you normally do. And if you need any extra info on this, I did literally just release a video uh, not long ago on the channel. Uh, that's called charting all-time highs five about four weeks ago so definitely check that out if you want to get some extra context on that you can actually see some of my charting before i even got to this part so you'll see all that broken down but that is how you would chart the bigger time frames on spy now let's go to the day trading levels on spy is everyone still with me you guys are good throw me some emojis or something to just let me know you're still here hopefully i didn't go too fast i know i'm pretty fast at talking when i'm going through these things Mainly because we've gone over them so much, but it's good it's good to go over things again. Ugh. 
Water's good. All right, you guys are still with me? Good, good, good. All right, let's move on to the day trading one. So we did swing trading or, you know, bigger time frame analysis, whatever we're calling it. And now we're going to the day trading, which I would call this day trading slash scalping if you want. Um, so this one's fun. This is probably my favorite one because it's, I don't know, it's kind of easy in a sense. Like once you get down, once you get down to doing it more. Um, and I kind of just do this as like, I, I don't know why I even do this, but I, I go over here and I mark 477.26 because this is the last emerging candle that was had uh, before a very long period of time went by. So you can see they actually went down. And again, by, by the way, guys, an emerging candle in your head, you should just think of it as like a stop point. Like, you know, when you're driving down the road, and there's a stop sign and you have to stop at it. That's kind of what I see these levels as. So they're not just good resistance or good support. They're everything. They're really good pivot points. You're going to find yourself in the smaller time frames trading up and above and below these things in, in, in any direction. These levels are very, very strong. Uh, they can be used in either direction. But may, again, that's why we have them. We have these levels, but we also have the types of entries, you know, the 40%, the 80%, the retest types. That's to help you navigate these levels. So the levels are set. You're, you don't have to touch them again. You can keep just maintaining them on the smaller time frames if you want, but you don't have to touch the bigger time frame ones again. So leave that emerging candle there just as a starting point. I like to do it to make myself practice because there's a lot of emerging candles all the way up to the all-time high. So get your price level tool again. And just to help you out, I would hit that setting cog wheel. And you see this one that says snap drawings to OHLC. Make sure it says that. Hit apply, then hit OK. It makes it a lot easier to actually snap onto the close of that day. See how I was just like down here? And then it snapped onto it to the close. It's very easy. It's very helpful. Because that's what you're marking. I'm marking the close of basically every green candle that's making a new high. That's it. That is the basic, super dumbed down definition of an emerging candle. Nothing exciting. And we're done. And then like we did on the other chart, just like I talked about last time, I want to mark that all-time high. But we're not really going to look at it with any significance yet you know just because it's been so recently made it really isn't that important yet you know it's 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 important to mark <laughs> so you know what the all-time high is but it's not like we're going to be sitting here playing it playing off that a hundred times it'll be very important to know when new highs are made though so at least have that marked um you could again just like on the other chart also mark psychological levels so we're up to 424 if you want to mark 425 uh be my guest personally i'm going to uh, 530 and remember these are day trade levels so you might want to get every psychological level so we got 525 530 what's half of that 527.50 you're pretty much just marking the like 50 cent mark the five dollar mark you know what i mean fives and the zeros if that makes sense the quarters uh so 30 3250 and you can go as far as you want i'm just doing this for practice but now you get that 535 and you might think like right now these aren't that important but you'll be very happy to have these levels on your chart in the future because right now it just looks like a mess but in the future if price ever does get up here you'll have those levels ready uh let's go back to the that's it that's it that's, it. that's all we got now we'll go to the five day five minute i go to the five day five minute because i just like to look at like what's happened recently and then see what happened from the previous days and recent price action today and you'll see not much happened today. We just kind of opened under a level, slowly retook it, and that's about it. But what else did we have here, though? Um, before here, and this is kind of like the other chart. Remember how we were going through doing the context, just kind of going through things? Well, I like to go through the previous day highs and lows. So let's look at just uh, Tuesday of last week. So we'll start from Tuesday, just because it's the low of the chart. So Tuesday had a lower open. They made a low at 5.11.12. They came back up. Didn't break over today's open, so still bearish as of this moment. Came back down, held the level, still looking to see bears break a support or bulls to try and hold, but no confirmations for any trades yet. They get over today's open, awesome, or Tuesday's open, sorry. They end up making a continuation. They get over the emerging candle of 5.12.85. They make it up to the next one, so on and so on. You guys, you guys see all that. Um, but we're going to start from here. So we're going to go from the context of the chart. So from the low of the chart to the top of the last red candle before the reversal up, where would that be? Right here. So we're going to edit properties. Add a couple days to it. That's it. And then what's that day's high? That day's high is about right here, right? Yeah, it is. So here to the open of the last green candle before the reversal down, which there really wasn't one. So I'm just going to cheat and do this. 
again, the high to the last open of the green candle before the reversal down. So I just see that as a nice little clean area to mark off. And that's it. Move on to Wednesday now. So what happens Wednesday? Where's, where's the marker at? Here it is. Wednesday starts about right here. So Wednesday... We end up getting a just flat open, nothing crazy. I mean, the previous day's close literally right there. So flat open. They end up getting a little bit of a dip lower. They hold the meat of that previous day high. They end up making another high, high or low. And it looks like kind of giving us a day like that, again, kind of like today, where they're just giving us a really boring day. This this is all news related, by the way. That's why you have that there. Um, and that's it. So then we move on. We see Thursday is the next day. So nothing to really mark here in terms of the lows because they didn't really break this area normally if this area would break then i would readjust it and be like all right mark this you know but there's no real need to because they didn't break anything so we're just gonna leave it now if that information would have been broken we would re-update it so what do we see at the new high now we have wednesday's high pan tool rectangle um, so we're gonna go from the high of that day to the open of that last green candle before the reversal down from the high of day. This isn't this isn't us saying that this is the strongest seller area to ever exist. We're just saying this is the high of day sell, uh, selling point. That's, that's all it is. This is where supply is. Supply equals a seller controlled area. So that's just where it is. We just want to mark it off. Pan tool over again. Uh, let me auto zoom. So now we're here. We're at the day before today, right? We're at Friday. So we get a higher open. We're way up here now, right? And we probably would have marked this day's close uh, to this day's open and been looking at this fib, you know, all that good stuff. But that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about the uh, highs and lows, the supply, the demands, all that stuff. So let's see how this day worked. So they got the higher open, and then pretty much all that day, they just kind of cascaded towards support, got a little bit of a lower close kind of towards the end, but stayed above that low, and that was really about it. So what can we take away from that? The same thing, the high of day supply, so high to the open of that green candle. Let's add a couple days to it. And again, we're just getting context of the chart. We're just catching up to where we are now. Zoom on over. Since we didn't really break this support, we're just going to leave it because, again, there's really nothing to take away from that. They didn't make a new low, so it would be kind of pointless to draw this, right? It would be pointless to draw this because they didn't make a new low. So we're just going to leave this here, right? until we see that it needs to be updated. And that's where we're getting to today. And that's why I'm happy to do this stream today is right here. So today we're going to have to update this zone. <clears throat> and by the way, hold up before I move on. If you went ahead and drew this on your own or saw me post it, good job. Because if you would have drawn this, it's kind of like this area. You can take up this whole candle if you want. But if you would have seen this, this was actually a pretty good dip spot uh, that I saw hold today as I was reviewing, of course. But they didn't just randomly gap down to anywhere. They gap down to a pretty known little hill spot. And that, that's kind of what these supply and demands are, is I'm going from the high of day supply, low of day demand. But you'll notice on very strong uptrend days or very strong downtrend days, sometimes you get these little humps uh, where it looks like this. Whoops. Uh, where it looks like, oh, come on, man. Let's zoom in. Uh, where you have like this wick here and they're kind of holding this as like a base. I mean, you guys see that's pretty pretty easy to see. And then on downtrends, you'll notice like eaves, you know, like rooftop eaves where it's like, all right, there's the high. They came down, they made a lower high. They came down, they made a lower high, and they projected from it. You know, looking for those things, that's really what we're looking for when we're looking at supply and demand. Or just the humps and the eaves or whatever you want to call it, the hills, the, the eaves, whatever the hell. Uh, but that's what supply and demand is if you're looking at it visually. So today, we're going to be updating uh, this zone today. So you can delete this area. I mean, you don't have to do it now. You can leave it till the day closes, but I'm going to delete it now. We're going to focus on drawing uh, today's low of day demand, which would be pretty much from this low. You can go to this open, but I'm going to go all the way to this candle here. So edit properties, add a couple days to it. And of course, you want to do this when the day's over. I'm just showing you how to do it now. Um, and then, of course, adding the hive day supply. So I'm going to just add that here, but I'm going to actually mark it here. That's it. So you can see not really much movement today. But going into tomorrow, this sets up an amazing thing for us. So we have that previous day close there. Oops. Where's that open? It's way up here. So here's the open. Here's the low. And that's it. Tomorrow is ready for SPY at least. It looks crazy because I'm zooming it in too much, but basically tomorrow we'll be looking over the combination of these areas for, for more upside. For more downside, we're going to be looking for a rejection or a breakdown of these areas. So we want to see higher lows and a breakout for longs for bulls to show up. 
We want to see lower highs rejecting this or a break under these supports for a potential breakdown. And again, we're not just looking for breakouts. Remember our types of entry, guys. Don't just like lose your mind there and be like, all right, I have the levels. That's it. That's all I have to do. No, you have the types of entries to also review and study. You know, what types of entries do we have? You have the 40%. So that's the lowest probability entry, right? But of that 40% entry, you want to look for the higher lows. And this is where you get your midterm retest, where you use that fib like we were just going over. You go from the high to the low. If it's still holding the fib, that's a good midterm retest. Sometimes we don't get that. Sometimes you get the entire full retest where they come all the way back down. And then you get some very apparent higher lows that make higher highs. And then continue on. So a bunch of things we can look for going into tomorrow on SPY. Um, but all in all, that is how you will chart the bigger and smaller time frame for SPY based off of the TA routine on how I chart. Um, that's, again, just something we put together with the emerging candles, the charting techniques, and then, of course, the entry types kind of add on to it for navigating the levels and stuff and, and really just making sense of it. And, of course, there is an order of operations, but that is a whole other conversation we can get into another day. Um, if you are someone who is a little bit more veteran in charting these levels and, and, and navigating them with those types of entries, though, I would move on to the order of operations. If you don't know what that is, there are two videos on this exact topic on the channel, so go check those out. Um, but if you're someone who's definitely more experienced in this kind of routine and, and this regard of drawing your levels, I would go check out the order of operations. That's, that's what you need to be working on now. So everybody's at different spots. I can't do work. We'll watch later. Thanks. No problem, SK. Uh, but does anybody have any questions or anything that they want to go over that regards to exactly I, what I was going over? Of course, if you have something else, we can talk about that another time. But right now, is there anything anybody has anything to say, add on? It doesn't have to just be questions. If you guys have anything to add on to what I might have missed or anything I might have you know, stepped over. Is there anything else you guys see? Is there anything else you guys have questions about? <clears throat> And yeah, not really a good example on how to draw previous day levels here today because of how just tight everything is. So small week. We don't have a market on Friday. And there really wasn't much super important news today. But there is important news coming out the rest of this week. So be careful for that. Thank you, SF. Appreciate you. And this is something you can do for SPY, SPX, IWM, um, QQQ. You can do this for individual equities. Uh, here, let me pull up my watch list. You can do this for Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, AMD. You can do this for anything on the screen. You can do this method. You can do this on crypto. You can do this on currencies. You can do this on commodity. You can do this on anything that has a chart. If there's a chart with price history, that's what, that's what this is based off of. So have at it. But this system covers everything that has a chart because it's based off of price history. Again, emerging candles, that's price history, right? That's long-term price history, right? So let's, let's type that. So emerging candles, long-term price history, right? I think we can all agree on that. Those come from the far left of the chart all the time. So a lot of the time, they're going to be very, very old levels, very important information from a long time ago, right? But then what are... What are levels of previous day? Like when we mark our previous day high, our previous day low, our open, our previous day close, our pre-market high, our pre-market low, what are those? What are the short-term levels? Short-term price history. So when we're combining these levels on the bigger and smaller time frames to give us these you know, the system here, we have levels everywhere and, and zones and, and highlighted things and all that good stuff. You know, what are you actually mixing up? You're mixing up short term and long term price history. That's it. There's no other variable there. That's it. 
And that's what we want to base our system off of, something that's simple and effective. If you go back and you backtest, and you guys see it all the time, you guys tag me in charts and post all the time, you'll see levels hitting like crazy or, or something sells off and it perfectly stops at something. That's not random. That's price history. Computers are literally programmed to think like that. It's not just people sitting there, you know, moving around billions and billions of dollars. There are actual computers at, with calculations set. And that's another thing I want to talk about, the halfway point. This is another thing a lot of computers and big money and every kind of thing has set. People think like this just in general, right? So let's say this big area, because this, this is a pretty great question. If Let's say somebody came into stream and said, hey, Josh, let's say I was taking puts under this, right? What's my target? Should I just take profit randomly in between this range or should I go for 516.78? I would tell them, no, you'd be crazy to go for 516.78. That's an almost $3 drop. That's very hard to catch, realistic, especially after we had the higher low, I mean the, the lower open and all that good stuff. That'd be very hard to catch. So what can we tell that person? If you use a fib from that level to the next level up, so you can do that to your emerging candle, you can do it to this low. I personally would do it to the emerging candle because that's the long-term price history level. Then you get a great in-between target that isn't made up, right? Every time I draw this, it's going to be the exact same. It doesn't matter if I delete it and then go rechart it again. If I go from here and I go to here again, I'm going to have the same level again. And why is that? Because this level right here, emerging candle. This level here, emerging candle. It's a long-term price history level, right? So that means I don't have to worry about deleting it. So if I ever find myself in a weird situation like this where it's like, well, what if I break under this low but I don't want to take profit at 517 because that's too far? What, should, what can I aim for? There's an in-between target right there at 518.65. Then you can leave others to a 518 flat or you can leave it to, to that level, whatever you want to do. You know, you can manage your trade at that point. That's all up to you. Everybody has different levels of comfortability. But we can do that because it's information that isn't going to change. It doesn't matter if I delete this whole chart. I will get the exact same levels every single time. And why is that? Because it's a set system. It's absolute. I, I can't change anything. There's no moving variables here, right? A lot of a lot of strategies these days have moving variables, and that's why you get volatile. Uh, you get very volatile outcomes, right? So you go into a trade, you do everything the same way, you make 10%, right? Maybe another time you lose 7%, maybe another time you make 15%, but it should all be in a general vicinity of each other based off of the size of the move that you're trading, right? So let's say you're randomly trading and you get different outcomes. That's going to piss you off. You're going to be like, what's going on? Am I messing up? Is something wrong with the system? Is something wrong with me? You know, and it's going to annoy you. It's going to get you, you know, and it's going to really be weighing on you as you go take more opportunities on the market, right? And that's why you need to give yourself a system that doesn't move, that doesn't have these changing variables or these moving variables. You need to have something that's set. And that's exactly what this system does. And that's why we like it so much because it's just something that's set. I, I, don't, I can't have any bias on this system. May, maybe I mess up the trading entry. Maybe I mess up my stop loss. Maybe I mess something on that end up. But I, everything outside of that is the norm, you know? There's no reason I should be sitting here saying, uh, there's no way it's falling. I can't believe that. Like, no, it rejected blank or it did this or it did that. You know, there's always something there to give you context on what something did or why it may have done that. Even without saying, oh, there was news. Oh, there must have been news here. Like, it's not always news. Like, yes, news moves price, but the levels are still working with that piece of news. Work with your levels. Focus on your levels. Make that the new standard to work off of. But I hope you guys enjoy the breakdown on the levels on the bigger and smaller time frames. I know that can be like a lot to take in at once when I'm going through it like that, but it's very important. It's very, very, very important that you understand how you're getting your information and what it means. Where is it coming from? You know, does anybody ever teach that? Not really. You know, you look around and people are teaching strategies left and right, but nobody's explaining where it comes from or what it means. That, that's why I like to go through this stuff because it gives you more confidence in what you're looking at. Now you understand, okay, this is where I'm getting that from or this is what that means. This is what level of importance this has. So now moving forward, you can trust the information in front of your eyes a little more. Yeah, definitely drop a like on the stream if you guys enjoyed that breakdown. I'll be sure to cut that up so you guys have it in a video or whatever because it was a lot. <sighs> Which I guess we don't really have to. That's kind of all over the channel, but... I want to do at least do that live so we have levels ready for tomorrow. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the rest of these charts, but I'm not going to sit here and explain every little thing I'm going to do. I just need to update my uh, my other charts. So you'll see me. See, this is me doing chart maintenance. Like I see that the price moved beyond this, slowed down. Awesome. Moved away from it. Great. I can I can delete this now. I can remove this. That's It's no longer needed. I don't need this stuff either. 
they broke a new high. So a new supply should have been drawn. I should have drawn from probably this candle here, but I'm going to go all the way to this open. Because, you know, why not? We have a level right there anyway. But you are supposed to go to the open of that green candle. But since we have that current day open there, I said, why not? Let's just add it in there. So we got our zone there from that day, that high. Uh, this would have been our new demand. Which, it really isn't a demand. It's You really actually shouldn't have to draw that one. Because there's no actual hold of level there. So I'll just draw that low. They break it. They project it. They stay under. But they fail to make new lows. They hold. They move up. Come back down. Good close. And now where we are today. So we can delete that level. We can delete that level. We can draw the hive day supply for this day. We can draw the previous day close. Where's the previous day open at? We can draw that. And that's really it. That's really all we can draw. Oh, wait. My bad. You can draw the previous day load demand, which might as well just include that level. So it looks like on QQQ is actually very clean. So you have the lower open continuation. They held support at 440-250. They came back up. They made a higher low, which I promise if you draw it from this low to this high, that's holding something. Or not. Uh, holding over today's open, though, good sign. Continuation into the 445 area. So they had some rough areas. You can see, like, why it was rough, though. They had to prove that they were trying to hold this as support. They had to hit this next level, prove they're holding this as support, make a new high. Then it's like, all right, well, we can't just keep rallying all day. So it's like, now we're just holding base at higher lows. So buyers are still holding a lot of good gains from today on the triple Q sector, which is tech, so very important. So today, we'll probably delete this level since we hit it. Uh, we'll probably delete this since we broke it. We'll delete this since we broke it. We'll leave that. We'll leave that because it's all in place. We'll add a new rectangle here for this level. Sometimes if you see a level nearby, just include it. Um, that level to the high of that last red candle before the reversal up. Edit properties. Add a couple days to it because we're going to look at this for a couple days. Unless it breaks the next day, then we'll just delete it and re-edit it. Um, and then the high of day supply, which is going to be from here to the open of the last green candle, which that might change if you just see a pump end of day. I'm just showing you guys what it would look like as of right here, right now, what it would look like. So if this pumps and we close a new high, delete this, that's that's getting re-added. But just showing you what it would look like right here, right now. You want to include your today's open. Your today's open because, <laughs> yes, it's today's open for now, but going into tomorrow, this will be this will be called previous day open. So that will be very important. And the same thing goes for the previous day close. You're going to want to include that. Um, what chart am I on? I need to read chart SPX. I'm not going to start as low. If you guys have any questions while I'm going, please feel free to ask. I will not bite. days to that today's open previous day close and then previous day high supply which that again could change if we need to edit that we will because there is still 43 minutes left in the day if you ever see notable information, like I know I didn't mention it, but like 
you don't have to just draw a like halfway point. Like if you see like this to this, like yeah, you could draw that level. And you'll see like, yeah, it does line up with a good rejection continuation spot. But if you see a level like right here and, and you think it's good enough, like you're like, oh, I like how this rallied up and then came down here and held this as a low, like mark it. Go ahead. Like it's not going to hurt you to add another level. If you think it's helpful, go ahead and add it. Just be consistent with it. Don't add it this day and then next week when you're recharting it, not add it. That would be weird, right? Be consistent with it. If you're going to add it, add it. Uh, so make sure you guys are going through that. I'm going to add a couple days to this. Okay, that can actually stay. That can be deleted. That can be deleted. Might as well just go to that close. All right, now we're where we are. All right, so we hit up to this high, slow down. That was probably a really good supply to have added. Push through this. Made new lows. So we probably wouldn't have added a zone here. We probably would have just straight up had a level here at the low. that day is open a oh, way up here damn that actually looks super clean it just all happened in 10 minutes so it reversed from here but it really didn't reverse to like way back here so I'll probably just include this whole green candle this one add a couple days to it Uh, today's open, of course, and then we'll leave that day's low because we really didn't break anything. And I'll, I'll leave that day's open because we really didn't go touch it again. So this gives us a good spaced out chart with plenty of levels all around. And I don't really need to add a, a demand because there's no real demand here. And yeah, we got all the four charts we talked about ready, ready to go for the next day. There's still 40 minutes before the close, uh, but really good breakdowns here on SPY and some of the top sectors that we wanted to talk about and go over. If you guys have any charts you want me to look at or go over bigger time frames over or something, let me know. Uh, if you guys have any questions or any comments regarding what we just covered, please let me know. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a lot of slow breakdowns, but you go through it a couple times and it'll, it'll definitely help. It's just about finding a system, finding a routine, and, and sticking to it. You know, seeing how well you can... You can stick to the system or stick to that routine is really what you're trying to do. And then over time, who knows? Maybe you'll be super disciplined. You'll be more in tune with your system, more in tune with how you like to trade and don't like to trade. But then more about yourself and the strategy you're trying to trade. More understanding is really all, all you're trying to do here. If you can break this down to a child, you can truly understand it more. Muscle memory, you know reacting the same way to the same scenario every single time is what you're trying to do is it always going to work out no but with the high probability strategy if you react the same way every single time even if you lose seven out of ten you should still be green on those three trades those three trades should have you in the green over those seven losers that's how good your winner should be so imagine if you have a strategy that's better than 30 percent win rate where i would say ours is a lot better than 30 i just like to use that math but it's crazy because you know you find a 30% win rate and that strategy gets you in the green just off of good risk reward. Imagine using the BB system correctly and having an even higher win percentage or something, you know? Then you, then you could just have a really, really good, you'll have good risk reward, you'll have a good strategy in front of you. It'll all just work together. Yeah, if there's one note to save on this chart, guys, it'd be this one. Please save that note. I would like to hear your thoughts on AMD and Netflix. We can definitely go through those. You're talking bigger time frame, right?
All right, so AMD is a peculiar one because this is semiconductor. Kettle drums. Now you got me. Hold up. I'm like taking my headset off now. You're either somehow hearing my computer or you somehow hear my music in my headphones because I am moving closer to my mic as I'm talking here and there. But maybe you heard that, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. All right. We'll go through it. All right. So all I did was draw this monthly emerging candles. I'm just looking at the weekly real quick to see if there's anything I want to draw here. I'm not going to lie, this this has been an area I've been liking to draw lately because this is like the old all-time high. This is like the old all-time high supply on the weekly. So if you add that and throw it to 2025, you'll see they actually took their sweet time sitting here. And a lot of people were complaining, saying like, oh, AMD, the semiconductors aren't doing anything. But all of them were doing this, like SMCI, AVGO, NVIDIA, MU, INTC, like all of these had consolidation before continuing more, you know, regardless of news. But they all had consolidation. They were allowed to rally again. I don't know why everyone was so like hateful against semiconductors going more. Like they were definitely allowed to. Um, and then another area I've been drawing is the actual all-time high supply on the daily, just to kind of remind remind myself that it is a large seller area. There is a, a day where they just had a doji, they had a gapped up small red day, another gapped up day, and then whipped very hard and then brought it right back down. And ever since then, it's been on a very sharp de uh, decline. So very important. Um, let's see what else we can get here. There's also something cool you can do. I know not all of you like indicators, but if you like using just simple EMAs, uh, EMAs are some of the greatest things for swing trading. So, and it's, it's very simple. You go from the nine to the 21, you go from the 21 to the 55, you go from the 55 to the hundred, you go from the hundred to the 200, so on and so on. And that's all you do. But what you're looking for are patterns. You want to find good patterns. So we can see this is pretty bearish, right? We all agree that's bearish, but we don't really have a break of anything yet, right? This is where they finally give you a break of something. This is a pretty good fake out day, but they never even made a new high, right? Continue downtrend, they made it to the 21 EMA. All right, awesome, target hit. You know, and you can just look at stuff like that from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. Try to focus on the price action between them, you know? So if we're under the 21 EMA, you want to see more bearish price action pop up, right? If you're a bull, you're probably waiting for more information just to settle to the right so you don't have to worry about anything. And you can just, again, look for some basing, try to look for some higher lows, some actual bullish candlesticks to pop up. Um, and if you don't want all those on, I would at least use the 9 EMA so you can give yourself a little bit of a kind of initiator. I love looking for patterns with that um, by itself. It's a very good way to practice. Lately, I haven't really been doing it. I just kind of focus on the patterns itself and p positioning of my levels or my supply and demand. Um, but if you want to throw those on, it's very... It's lazy to look at. It's a quick look. I like looking at it for like five seconds and it's like, all right, I'm bullish. All right, all right, I'm bearish. All right, I don't really have enough information. I'm going to sit tight. You know, able to look at it and in five seconds instantly be like, all right, that's my decision. Yes, I know about the news. You don't have to re remind me. Also, it's not the end of the world for AMD. As you can see, there was a bad day and they had a green day. Well, they're still down technically, but you see what I'm talking about. When you type, I hear a banging of metal drums or something. Oh, it's probably my insanely loud typing then. It sounds like a drum. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably my typing. I'm sorry. Hey, it says sit cash or nah, pole. Um, yeah, I was asking if you guys sat cash or today sat cash today or not nah. like did you sit cash today did you just chill or did you go and take some risk um but initial thoughts on amd though garden traders just for a quick summary i actually do like the short-term demand that it's sitting on top of it's just there's a lot of news and volatility regarding them the ones that are kind of keeping this chart green are nvidia and smci these two are keeping the semiconductors in general just green. And another great thing you can look at too um, is SOX. No, I'm sorry. SOXX. Damn, there's so many. This one. <laughs> Socks. 
And I kept typing the other ones. Socks. This is a good ETF to watch that has a majority of those involved in the same portfolio. So you can see what they're doing as a whole. And you can see just in general from the high to where they draw down just now, they are rejecting a bearish area even with this massive bullish move. But at the other end of it, you got to be very careful because NVIDIA is still very bullish and not affected by the news and as well as SMCI. And these have had very big momentum for not just semiconductors, but the stock market itself. Everyone keeps wondering, like, why is the stock market still rallying? Because their sector's still rallying. We're allowed to go up if the stock market's, you know, has has individual equities that are moving up at a rapid pace, right? If certain sectors start holding support or just aren't moving down as heavily, and we have a sector like the semiconductors moving up like that, we're gonna see a difference on the spy chart. Uh, so I, I really wouldn't count the movement out on on any semiconductor. If you think these are going away, they are definitely not. You chilled today? Good job, Ruben. A great day to chill. And if you didn't chill today and didn't trade SPY, there were a couple good sectors to go trade, but definitely not focusing on SPY was the move today. Thank you. I appreciate the breakdown. Love to see where you are in it too. And let's go over Netflix. You said Netflix was the other one. Um, also, let me not just talk about upside. Uh, let's talk about downside too. If they end up rejecting this, because this is just a very short-term area I drew, um, there's a very good chance they're coming down to retest that 170, 167.60s. The last play I personally took on them was this hammer. And we took profits that very next morning, and they just dumped ever since then. They had a nice, just kind of slightly positive day. And then over the weekend, we had China news come out. It came out Sunday. It actually came out Saturday because, you know, it was Saturday for them. Or it was Sunday for them. It was Saturday for us, I should say. But, yeah. Uh, and then Netflix, I already have it charted, ready to go. Uh, as you saw in the chat, I think it was last week and the week before I've reposted this. And we keep looking for this potential breakdown to happen. I think the last play I took on it was this candle. And I took very minimal profits that next day. Since then, I have not touched it. It's had a nice green positive candle. We had a potential dark cloud cover, which it did close under the 50%, but it did not close under the golden pocket of that next day's uh, low to high. Since then, we've been holding those sibs with higher lows. So this actually looks like it wants to potentially blast off above 632. And this is the, these are the patterns I always tell people to be very fearful of, or grind ups or grind downs. This is where you have like, let's say you're going down. Let's say if a Red candle, green candle, red candle, green candle, red candle, red candle, green candle, red candle. These are some of the most powerful downtrend moves you can get because eventually it is going to lead to a gap down and people are just going to give up and it's going to keep going down or you're going to have the opposite happen uh, where it finally gets a good base build and you get an impulse move. And then you can go off of that for a higher low. So you don't have to trade the first move of either of those scenarios, but it gives you good information. But honestly, I'm waiting on Netflix. I, I, I can't get a read on it. It's 50-50 right here. It's in a spot of the chart where, yes, great short positions can happen, but it's also at the part of the chart where if a new high is made, it doesn't have to keep stopping. It's had all this consolidation. It can de it can definitely make it up to that next highlighted area. So just kind of keeping it on watch for now and seeing what I can get out of it, really. AMD is probably a lot more clear than the Netflix chart, in my opinion. Good request, though. I like looking at both of those a lot. Coins, another one. We've, I mean, we look at pretty much all these, but EMPH. I almost blindly grabbed puts this morning just because I liked how it opened under that candle, but I didn't. And now look at it; it looks really good. So might be seeing recent lows tested. If recent lows can break, you might be seeing uh, very just a, very close to just above a hundred being tested on the EMPH chart. So might see some movement to the downside on that one short term if we don't see some support hold from the recent low. Disney's still on fire. Moderna from Alexis Santana in the chat. That one's killing it. Just kind of going through charts and trying to remember what's up. Because I don't go through all of these. Sometimes it's my chat that I go through some of these. So, oops. TXN, I didn't really have it ready. I will say, uh, I charted SoFi with Sinful, and this does look good. Sophie, SoFi. Dollar General was looking good. We had a reset candle, small green day, no new high, rejection, breakdown. So that one's now slowing down again. Probably looking for a breakdown of that soon. This one could still get a good rejection here, but, I mean, anything is still possible with that chart. 
Same for Qualcomm. Same for AMAT. Should we break a new lows? I like that it made a bearish kicker here, but then it failed to hold a new low, but it seems to be holding that new low now. Uh, UPST had a really nice hammer in supply as a lower high supply. It was like three lower highs here in the same supply uh, and a good rejection. So this still looks good for potential short-term downside, but I'm not really a fan of most of those tickers, though, to be honest. I didn't really like the chains. McDonald's a couple days ago had a good rejection of a supply, but it wasn't really the best candlestick. And then this gave you a better show of hands. Good break of base there, short term. And then they actually kept them down to the lows. You don't get that every time. Roku's one that keeps getting life off of the supports here. They're going to get another bullish kicker here again, back to back. I don't trade snow too much, but I like its movement. So we'll try to watch that one more. about most of those tesla is an interesting one too oh yeah reddit's a stock i forgot about that All right, well, that was interesting. Somebody in my chat typed uh, Reddit new all-time high as a joke, and I just wanted to go look at it. <laughs> it is kind of funny. I'm not playing either, just learning to read the charts. Okay, good, good. And that's all you need to be doing is just getting context, getting reviews in, and recapping, really. Good stuff, though, Garden. Proud of you. Adobe... I was going to say, I think I just tried this last week. <sighs> I'm interested. What does this gap to look like? So we got this close to this candles open. I didn't even make it to the halfway. This is probably where they'll go if they rally again. It's 535. We're at a pretty historical demand, though. It looks like I drew this from the weekly, though. If we go to the weekly. Yeah, I was going to say I had to have. So short term, higher low here. And then you have a little bit of one here. So that's why I drew those levels all together. But they seem to be in like the midst of all that. Like they don't know what they want. But good reaction. This is an inside bar on the weekly, which is a very good sign. Take those highs, take this high, take this low. Basically looking for some confirmation short term outside of the high and low of this candle. And then even more so outside of the red candle. But not, not as much out of the upside. You have other levels here to worry about. Interesting chart though. I like that on the weekly and the daily. Not too many charts look good on both. Some charts don't look good on either. <laughs> good find though. Who was that? Uh, Garmadon. Oh, good find. It actually looks really nice. I think what I want to see out of this is, and I've already gotten some of it, is an impulse move. I got one good impulse move. From that impulse move, I want to see it hold a low like it is now with the bullish candlestick with exactly what it's doing. What I want to see from here, though, is a little bit of a continuation over 5.13.40s, maybe even a second higher low. But either way, this is a good start for buyers. Just you want to see a little bit more life first. Not a bad start, though. It's also a, a weak sign. Why I drew this first earlier is because they gapped down from this close to this open, right? And what I'm getting from that is that they made this low and they did rally, get impulse move, but they weren't even strong enough to make it to the halfway point, which is like kind of like a median for me, you know? When I when I expect something to, to get an impulse move, I expect it to at least touch the halfway point. It couldn't even do that. So it's struggling. It's, you got some weak buyers here for sure. But guys, if you have any other questions, let me know. If not, I'm going to end the stream there. We're pretty much at the end of the day. This last 20 minutes or so. Um, 
I saw Detouch drop the polls message. So if you guys want to go drop your – let us know how your day was. You can actually click in here. Go to the trade floor. You can click on polls. Anybody can click this. And then click good, bad, or if you didn't trade. We like to know if people didn't trade or not. It's also a very important thing. And don't lie. Don't inflate your numbers. We can't even see who's clicking it. But, yep, it's always fun to do that. Just to get kind of a general consensus on how everyone's doing. Join us in Discord if you're not there yet. 100%. Thanks for the input. No problem, man. Thanks for dropping a good ticker. I think I think you're the reason I had this charted, Garmadon. I think it was a week or two ago you might have said Adobe or someone else might have maybe. I thought it was you or, or maybe it was German Perez. I don't know. I, I thought that's who this was, but maybe not. Thank you for the stream today. Thank you, Garden. Thank you guys for joining in here, even though there was like literally no warning. <laughs> Um, but thank you guys for being here, joining in, learning. We talked about the levels, how we draw them very heavily today, just for a, a quick update for everybody for tomorrow. Again, today wasn't that exciting, but I think the rest of the week will be fine. Again, Friday, we shouldn't have a market at all, so try to get the bulk of your energy and, and all that stuff out there uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, and, and maybe even Thursday. But again, guys, have a great rest of your day. Don't go stress. Go review. Go recap, and then go rest, and I'll see you tomorrow for the stream. We'll go over some more stuff. But uh, I'll see you guys later on. Have a great rest of your day. And yeah, see ya.